Well, we're always being asked, always being asked on the program about transplanting seedlings and shrubs and camellias and roses from one part of the garden to the other. In fact, not so much today, but last week I think we had about five different calls about uh, how to prune, uh, how to transplant, when to do it. Well, uh, Dr. Huey's on the phone. And he's going to give us some details and what role that soil microbes play. I'm very interested in this because uh, I hadn't even thought of that side of it. Huey, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Graham. Uh, yeah, I guess it seems strange to talk about uh, things like transplanting, but the warm weather is, you know, really going to be here pretty soon, and then it's too late to move many plants. So, you know, the, the stress of moving together with the potential for a warm day or two, it probably isn't worth waiting much longer and taking the risk. So over the next four weeks or so, it's the ideal time to move some plants. And there's probably some plants you want to move and you see some saplings you want to plant out. So when moving plants, yeah, people often consider things like the roots and perhaps trimming of some of the leaves that the root system can t- maintain that plant. But I would say almost nobody thinks about soil microbes and the role that they play in the plant's recovery and the ability to establish itself. Um, yeah, guilty, guilty as charged. I'd never even thought of it. That's a good point. What role so do these bacteria and the fungi play in the transplant process? Well, we know that plants have a very specific microbiome, which really just means they have different plants and different soils have varying bacterial and fungal population. It's very much like we have a specific gut microbiome. So many people think, so what? But plants spend a lot of resources recruiting and and selecting exactly the microbes they require. And these are found in the soil around the roots. So when you're transplanting, you should really consider taking some of that soil to a new location. Now, I know the root ball becomes very heavy, but just take a couple of buckets of the soil to a new location. And I say this because I was giving a talk to the horticulturalists at the Botanic Gardens. And they mentioned to me that sometimes when they transplant saplings, especially from difficult to grow and rare trees, they often don't do well away from the mother plant. So I advise them, take as much of the native soil as possible, and this way you transplant the microbes along with the plant. And the feedback I got was that it made a huge difference. So these soil microbes really function to establish the plant in a new location. They stimulate new growth. And also when plants get damaged, they're obviously more prone to infection. So these microbes help take... Uh, protect the plant against those pathogens that might come in. That's so important, especially with plants like Banksias too. So what if you can't move much of the soil to a new location? It it might be just limited. Well, there is one alternative, and that's to water the plants in with something like go-go juice. Now, Ah. firstly, it's got that seaweed extract, so that helps in that transplant stress that we're all familiar with, and also has some growth promotion. But perhaps in this case, most importantly, it's a probiotic for your soil. So go-go juice contains about 400 different soil microbes. So in effect, its use helps to re-establish that diversity in a new location. Over time, the plants will then select those that are best suited for its growth and health. I sort of think of go-go juice a bit like Yakult for your soil and your plants. Yeah. Look, I heard too that Angus actually counts to see if there's 400 in each bottle. Well, we do do uh, DNA profiling just to make sure we maintain that diversity, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep a DNA and test on him, that's for sure. How is he, by the way? He's very well, yes. He's doing, he's doing very well, yes. Oh, good. Uh, good recovery. Very, yes, yes, he's doing very well, and he's uh, very, very busy at the moment. So. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Keep, him, keep him off the street and keep him out of strife. Well, there you go. Uh, we've got some interesting information about go-go juice. So if you can't move the soil, move it if you can. But if you can't, when you're transplanting, then water in the go-go juice. You can see why transplanting isn't about just pulling the plant out and sticking it into a new location. You should also consider the soil microbes. And one way to maintain that, uh, in fact, during that moving process with the soil, is, of course, to use go-go juice. Uh, And, of course, you can get the go-go juice at at Nutrog, uh, from Nutrog, available at Bunnings, other hardware outlets, and, of course, uh, our mates at uh, all the good garden centres. Yui, thank you very much for that fascinating bit of information. Um, no I, I've learnt a lot again. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> no worries. Have a great week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Yeah, cheers. Bye-bye, mate. Thank you. Uh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, I, we know about the soil, and we say, yeah, use the seaweed, but the go-go juice is even better still. Traffic.